This is NTV. All right, a very good morning to you. It is exactly six minutes past 8 a.m. And of course, today is a very big day to all of us, okay? And of course, it's all about budget day. And we're talking about 3.6 trillion shillings. And on the conversation today, we'll be focusing on the impact of the budget on hustlers. And first of all, um, and we're saying hustlers, quote unquote, because I think that term is pretty much relative. <laughs> um, if you ask me, so we'll look at how then do we make adjustments? Because as it is, we're dealing with debt all right and of course in huge amount we're dealing with you know the fact that we're sort of like trying to stabilize the economy but at the same time dealing with inflation so as it is things are tough for kenyans and even as we await the budget that is 2023 2024 budget estimates to be read this afternoon and that is at exactly 3 p.m the question is, what are some of the expectations that we have and how do we adjust to the same so that, again, we sort of like survive? Because a lot of people are saying, listen, us, we're just surviving at this point, okay? So then how do we make sure that we sort of like adjust uh, to the same uh, even as we, again, yeah. wait to see what are the great, uh, greatest, some of the hits and misses as far as the budget 2023 2024 is concerned and of course today on the conversation we're asking you what are your expectations from the 2023 2024 budget reading like we said this afternoon at exactly 3 p.m so what are some of your expectations um a number of you have a lot to say uh, right here on all social media platforms. Um, so someone says, this is Enoch Smee who says, Ministry of Defense, Health and Education to be given priority, okay? And then someone else says, um, this is Ndegwa Waomai, says, every person's expectations is that the budget brings hope to the nation, okay? And then uh, someone else says, this is Milcheb C, yeah? okay? says in fact nothing let it be what they have prepared because sina wezo tena <laughs> all right and then someone else um says not much expectations we just have to struggle no listen this is damaris Chiruto and um one more uh says will the fuel uh, this is newton kenya who asks will the fuel prices go up or down that is the question that he is asking and i'm pretty sure we all know the answer to that okay but let me introduce my guest remember the question is very simple what are some of your expectations from the 2023 2024 budget reading this afternoon my guests are already here an old ladies panel love that uh, and of course on my immediate left we have ruth kenyanju who is an economist so good to see you again you. when was the last time you're here it's been a while right? almost a year do we start saying happy new year happy birthday happy to anniversary show. happy everything I I know, I know. <laughs> so it's so good to have you, Karibu Sana. You, you look so lovely much, this morning. And of course, we have Whitney Mushani, who's a political and economic analyst as well in studio with us. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. You're Thank well. You. Karibu yes. Sana, first time that we're meeting yes. uh, on yes. the show. So, Karibu Sana, Thank you it's so your maiden, much. Uh, same way as the maiden budget. <laughs> Thank you so much. Here on the show, Karibu me. Sana, it's so, so good to have you this morning. All of you looking lovely. Like we're saying, the hot colors today uh, means the hot day. <laughs> <laughs> that will be uh, on, on, on the show. Okay, so very quickly, the 2022-2023 budget uh, was under the theme Accelerating Economic Recovery for Improved Livelihood. And of course, again, we were coming back from trying to readjust from COVID-19 and then the Ukraine war. There's a lot of things that was happening in this current budget. I wonder what your expectations are. And I'm just going to start with you, um, Ruth, <laughs> before we even analyze what should be prioritized. Because someone here says education, health, um, you know, should be given priority. And of course, we'll also try to see how then that translates to, you know, us on our day-to-day -day activities. But what are some of your expectations from this year? budget no th not this year's financial <laughs> 2023 2024 what are some of the expectations thank you so much Fini. Mm. i think i'll describe or use the words that the cs has used that okay. this is a proper 
perfect storm. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect storm. Like mm -hmm. the expectations are quite different from what we have seen in the last years. Yeah. And as you've said that uh, we are coming and recovering from many factors many that factors, have been yeah. there for the last five years. Mm -hmm. COVID-19, before it settled, the war in Ukraine, before it settled, mm -hmm. we had one of the longest drought, drought for more than 40 years. Yes. Then mm -hmm. we had a dip because last year was a, 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 a election year. Yeah. So the transition from the previous mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. to this government, as much as the last year's dim was to spy economic growth yeah. this year i think it's going it's it's, it's a bit different mm -hmm. um if you look at uh, uh, uh my expectation or maybe one of the things that i haven't seen uh, maybe uh put uh, uh the government has not put a lot of focus or the minister has not put a lot of focus mm -hmm. or there has not been definition of major thematic areas that the government is following like yeah. we used to know about the big four agenda yeah. we really current haven't seen like I their their main focus and mm -hmm. that really need to come out clear so that we can know that the collection of the money that is going to be collected mm -hmm. even with the increase of 200 plus billion in the current budget yeah. that the money is going to be focused in this area and you have mentioned the area of health which mm -hmm. we haven't seen really like it's being uh, the main area because even after the the county said they really want uh, the the national government to take over health mm -hmm. that hasn't really we haven't seen the negotiation or talks or conversation scene. around that area mm -hmm. then if it's come to maybe housing a lot of housing issues have come because of the current yeah. levy yes. and the light uh, now it has changed to a levy <laughs> to from a fund that, right yeah, yeah. then uh, uh, when we come to infrastructure like mm -hmm. it was uh, mm -hmm. uh, or industrialization like yeah. it was in the big four agenda mm -hmm. still we haven't seen that and a lot mm -hmm. of industrialization and uh, uh, manufacturing is going to be affected by the current VAT on mm -hmm. uh, oil products yeah. or fuel mm -hmm. so and um, a lot of repo effect that is going to hit I mean, on the listen. common do you know like just thinking about it in itself is just it's, it's really really scary because as it is like i said now things are tough so you can imagine um, once this is done you know and, and going into the next financial year I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure how most people will survive um right because yeah. drought is like survival mode what we eat today we don't know you know what's gonna happen um tomorrow and of course this is a situation for so many um kenyans whitney i'm curious to hear what you have to say because there has been a lot of like politicization right um and especially when it comes to the finance yes. bill um there has been mixed reactions there has been debates all over the place but of course there has been a lot of you know politicization of the same um but again just thinking about it what are some of your expectations what do you expect to first of all here and see <laughs> this um, afternoon. Thank you so much and mm. also um, a good morning to your viewers. Mm. Um, for me, what I'm expecting to hear from CF, uh, CS and Juguna um, mm. at 3 p.m., um, I would like for um, the Kenya Kwanza government to focus on the productive sectors of the economy. Mm -hmm. When talking about the productive sectors of the economy, we're talking about agriculture mm -hmm. being the first one. Mm -hmm. We know agriculture is devolved, um, but we also know that counties don't really um, uh, allocate a lot of money um, to agriculture. So I would expect the CS to really um, emphasize the importance of agriculture and as we know, mm -hmm. agriculture um, employs a lot of people in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's also a top foreign honor. Mm -hmm. um, in Kenya, we're talking about tea, we're talking mm -hmm. about coffee, yeah. horticulture. So um, agriculture, I would expect a lot of em emphasis on that, on yeah. how they, um, they're they going to ensure that we have food secure. Mm -hmm. The second one, which is um, a major contributor to the GDP, which I would expect the Kenya Kwanzaa to focus on because we have a comparative advantage in Kenya, mm -hmm. is the MSME sector. Yes. The MSME sector, um, but when we look at the policies of Kenya Kwanzaa, I would like to say that um, those policies are parochial mm -hmm. and they're very, um, meaning they're very short-sighted and narrow um, in terms of economic um, growth and development in terms of the SME sector. Why do mm -hmm. I say that? The MSME sector is fully dependent on the floating middle class of Kenya. Okay. When you're looking at the floating middle class of Kenya, they're going to be hit the hardest mm -hmm. if okay they're going to be hit hard mm -hmm. and also the low income earners are going, going to be hit the hardest, hardest yeah. by this finance bill by the kenya kwanza um um, um budget mm -hmm. so when when you disenfranchise the the middle class that mm -hmm. means um there won't be enough demand for what the msmes um are produce producing. exactly yeah. mm -hmm. so um when we're talking about the msme sector i do not think that the kenya kwanza government has put in enough emphasis on that mm -hmm. and thirdly um we know that uh, the biggest contributor in kenya is the service economy 
economy. Mm. Um, I would like to see um, a lot of tax incentives in terms of probably the financial services, the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that those are my key highlights in what I expect CS Njuguna to, um, to focus on as he reads the budget. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, the MSME sector and the service sector which contributes um, mm -hmm. the majority to mm -hmm. Kenya's GDP and also which employs majority, majority of the Kenyans. Of the people. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and of course when we look at then you know, sort of like the estimates. And, and, and again, we're comparing this to the 2022-2023 um, budget where, I mean, like you rightly put, there were clear um, ways of how, you know, this this budget and who gets what, um, you know, in terms of what the money is allocated to. But looking at the economy as it is right now, I know a lot of people, I mean, and even yesterday we were having a conversation still, um, you know, on the same in this is as far as the finance bill uh, and of course the impact that it has and especially on the cost of living now. Um, and, and one of the um, guests said, listen, it is good. It is not so bad. <laughs> it is good. It is okay. But the timing is wrong. It wasn't the right time to start introducing, you know, increase in taxes. Because again, at the end of the day, it might look sustainable, but really isn't. Because in a short while, we'll start seeing, you know, um, you know, the whole aspect of taxes sinking. And that is not sustainable, um, you know, to all of us. So when we talk about then making sure that the priority areas are, you know, sort of like invested in, allocated a bit more, we're talking about, like we said, health, um, agriculture, which is very, very key. You're talking about... Um, so like motivating when it comes to our you know industries production and local manufacturing as well um but a lot of people would say so to, to how soon then will we expect to see changes in this and because as it is things are tough people do not have jobs we are supposed to pay taxes and increase taxes um, you know at, at the same time so the big question that people a lot of people usually have is how soon do we expect to see these changes Thank you so much, Winnie. Mm -hmm. I'm um, just thinking change yeah. is never easy and it doesn't yeah. take a and day. And we don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and for a country, yeah. for a country, it's taking, it, it's going to take long. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm repeating again and again and saying this is a global recession. It yeah. really is, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Just echoing what um, Whitney was saying in, mm -hmm. in terms of agriculture, if you look at this budget, it has mm -hmm. only allocated 75 billion out of, uh, of 3.6 yes. billion. Trillion. So you can see the focus area it's like uh, agriculture has been abandoned mm -hmm. uh, if you look at for example in terms of taxing mm -hmm. uh, the middle class mm -hmm. are being stretched and especially the formal sector mm -hmm. uh, we need from a from a working uh, uh, population of for example 18 million people mm -hmm. only 6,000 are in the formal sector and yeah. those are the ones that the minister has really really mm -hmm. stretched yeah. what is going to happen with the 12 million yes. that are that are in the in, informal, in the informal sector? sector we haven't yeah seen how that is really going to be implemented mm -hmm. we haven't seen the way that KRA is going to do different mm -hmm. from what has been done previously yeah. you've seen from the shortfall of the budget there is going to still already be a shortfall of seven almost 700 billion mm -hmm. then how are they planning to collect that and mm -hmm. from where yeah. because already the the formal sector is actually stretched the service mm -hmm. sector mm -hmm. as she's saying is already stretched yeah. and then over and above that what about the six additional million of youth mm -hmm. who are unemployed yeah. people you they know jobs, and I, yeah. I think the w what i'm looking for is that implementation change can be fast but if that change can be properly diversified mm -hmm. and really be taken so that we are all brought together okay. and we are able to offer or bring uh, something to the coffers mm -hmm. and uh, then what happens now with the that over stretching of a small i call them small minority and that small minority they don't even normally have uh, a, a robust because they're they, they are proper sitting pretty in offices. Mm -hmm. They don't have a robust kind of a way in terms they can be able to communicate their uh, their issues in terms of lobbying. Because yeah. if sees a common one whenever they have an issue, mm -hmm. but the border guys or other Kenyans, they don't have a problem coming down here demonstrating mm -hmm. and trying to say or bring their plight. Mm -hmm. But you see the formal sector does not really have those clear lines in terms of how they're supposed as much there are many uh, pri private uh, uh, sector groupings that uh, normally comes together. Yeah. So with the overstretching of a small percentage which are the working for minority then even the t in terms of public mm. Uh, uh, public service of mm -hmm. public uh, the way they are going to be offering services to common mwana inchi yeah. is going to be overstretched. That's why mm -hmm. you will find queues. Mm -hmm. That's why you will find people are trying to fight for the resources yeah, that the that government available. has put in place. So mm -hmm. this change will not come as soon as we want. If okay. then we cannot see that clear thing being outlined from mm -hmm. uh, from Treasury. Mm -hmm. One thing that the minister has said or the minister
Minister said yesterday mm. is that this is a proper a bottom up economic model that has been used, mm -hmm. meaning that they're trying to get money from the middle class mm -hmm. and bringing to Mwanainchi. But what are they doing mm -hmm. to the common Mwanainchi Wanjiko, the people who are employed, mm -hmm. to bring them to the net of working and something that she has men mentioned mm -hmm. on MSMEs yeah. so that we can see the sprouting of SMEs which who, who are going then to be able to spur economic growth? Then mm -hmm. that there is no clear line. If we look at still the MSMEs, we've seen the issue of turnover tax mm -hmm. as much as that has been changed from five hundred thousand per annum yeah, to, one to one million, million but yeah. still mm -hmm. you know I think enough needs to be done. Enough mm -hmm. needs to be done. Mm -hmm. The other thing maybe as I finish on this point, Winnie, I can mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. this whole issue, uh, we've seen the allocation of uh, of budget and we've seen what is going to the national government yeah. and the largest beat which is on um, mm -hmm. going to the uh, uh, paying of, uh, uh, of bills and uh, payment and expenditure. We haven't seen mm -hmm. what the government is doing to restructure this expenditure because mm -hmm. they said last regime mm -hmm. there was coalition government which brought in a huge wage bill mm. then what are they doing now wow. without that mm. so that we can feel comfortable that as much as top line is increasing even the bottom line is it's also, also shrinking and I'm, yeah some of those things yeah and and i'm pretty sure if you ask a lot of kenyans um now and especially you know like we're saying on the sort of like lower tier most of them will tell you listen if anything we are the ones who are suffering the most <laughs> um you know as far as what we're experiencing now um in the country someone was talking about sort of like um formalizing the informal sector so i'm just curious um you know from sort of like your prediction and of course your opinion with me um how this will sort of like help um improve the situation as it is in the country and even moving forward because again like we're saying we need to see some bit of structure right because this is a really really good contributor uh, as far as the economy is concerned um, thank you for that. Um, as we've said, um, um, the people who are in the formal sector, we have three million people who are employed in the formal uh, in the formal sector, mm -hmm. and we also have three uh, th three million more people who are registered taxpayers meaning we're talking about um six million who are in the formal sector yeah. and um we know that the labor force of kenya is about 18.3 million mm -hmm. meaning about 13 point, uh, 13 million people have not been netted in yeah. um now when we look at kenya kwanzaa's um financial finance bill mm -hmm. we look at the the places of course that treasury is not very innovative and creative in terms of giving incentives into the informal sector so that they can um, formalize them. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing them stretching the middle class who mm -hmm. are, you know, the people who have pay slips. Mm -hmm. We've seen that they've increased in HIF to 2.75 percent. The There's NSSF no cap. They've well. increased in NSSF. Yes. There's the housing tax right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We also have pay, uh, meaning that disposable income will really shrink. Mm -hmm. um, so when we look at how we can formalize the informal sector, we're talking about incentives. Mm -hmm. Incentives, we can also when we're talking about in economics we have something like the laffa curve mm -hmm. meaning when we increase taxes it doesn't mean that um the compliance will be at a hundred percent people will be discouraged there's no motivation exactly <laughs> there will not be no motivation yeah. so how you can net in the people in the informal sector is probably by lowering some taxes yes. yeah by lowering some taxes in um, um for example turnover tax if it remained at one percent mm -hmm. and then you probably just make it um from one million um to 25 million as turnover mm -hmm. uh, but at one um, one percent, that would yeah. that would net more people in uh, who are in the informal sector. Mm -hmm. So we need some incentives, and also we've seen most of the people who are in the informal sector, they just conduct their businesses in the open market. Mm -hmm. You can probably um, get. Um, construct for them some stalls mm -hmm. and then when you you know when you get them into the stalls you can probably integrate them into the tax system so we need to net in um the 18.3 labor force so that you can have um tax that is equ equitable to um mm -hmm. majority of the kenyans because as we've said right now it's the um the floating middle class which is really being raided mm -hmm. by yeah. their paychecks and uh, as we've said um mm -hmm. once you read the middle class mm -hmm. the purchasing power is already down it's because down, of infl yeah. because of inflation, inflation. Yeah. the disposable income because of all these taxes mm -hmm. um we also see that um increase on in the vat or on petroleum products from eight percent mm -hmm. to sixteen yeah. percent when it's going to translate to like 
unga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Literally everything. Everything, the everything in the economy, the ripple effect. To, yes. Exactly. And also this brings in the t into the question of employment. Mm. Once um, a f foreign direct um, invest, uh, foreign direct investors, they will not, they will shy away from coming to Kenya because mm. the cost of energy makes them very uncompetitive yeah. when they come to um, do businesses. Meaning we're not going to get many people being employed as we pass this um, this fi this finance bill as it is. So mm -hmm. the employment sector is also just looking the the future of the employment sector is looking very mm. um, bleak and also you know you might see some layoffs because the cost of doing I mean, business yeah. is going to go high mm. the cost of energy is going to cost of electricity mm -hmm. the cost of fuel mm. these taxes i do believe that um some employers might uh, just decide to restructure and especially this housing levy mm. i'm not so sure if you've gotten clarity from the government mm. they've said it's a tax um from from the employee um at three percent uh, at 1.5 percent yes. but i'm much, yeah, yeah exactly and mm. also so probably the employer will be matching those um, 5, yes, yeah yeah well. so that yeah. is going to be a comp that's going to be a tall order on the cost of doing business in Kenya and we've, we've already seen a lot of employers saying listen we can't afford this we, we cannot I mean the, the so we're expecting this thing, yes layoffs. a lot of layoffs um, yeah. you know for, for so many uh, employers as well which again is, is gonna translate to and uh, then you know unemployment um, yeah. which which we talked about and the government will be able to collect exactly. the, the revenue revenue yes mm -hmm. so this is just yeah. counterproductive it's, it's very counterproductive Active. Now the yes. question is, and especially now to come on Mwananchi, who's like, now what do I do? Because it's like, I'm you know, Literally, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of force from yeah. this side yeah. and then a lot of force from this other side. And it's the common Mwananchi who's really, really feel, feeling the pinch um, as it is now. Yesterday, again, still going back to the same, there's a lot of conversation around, I wish we could maintain the status quo as far as tax is concerned do not increase taxes because again like we're saying that's you know it might might lead to a lot of people not paying taxes but maintaining the same but at the same time ensuring that we increase our tax base so that it's that is more sustainable as compared to increasing it all you know very quickly and then you know that sinks uh, almost immediately so now that the people are feeding the pitch the big question is that because the reality is things are not going to change yeah. not anytime soon so the big question is then how do we adjust right and of course i'd want us to focus on the same after the break because like we said it's a very very big day today 3.6 trillion shillings uh you know is the 2024 20, 2023 2024 budget estimate we expect that to be read uh the, today in the afternoon and of course we have um you know our reporters and of course we'll be giving you wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the same remember the hashtag that we're using today is budget 2023 ke on all our socials but the question that we're asking you this morning um, is, uh, you know, what are some of your expectations from uh, this year's budget? That is not this year, this financial year, which again, we're about to, to go into. That is 2023-2024. What are some of your expectations? I'll be reading more of your feedback after the break. Stay with us. decide to become a doctor? It's because my father needed one. And you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be happy like you. Life insured is love assured. butter made with 100% pure peanuts and a good source of omega-6. Grow healthy and happy kids with Blue Burn Peanut Butter. Available in 200 grams, 400 grams and 800 grams. Buy a pack today. I'm going back to the Drobovolskis, that's it. I've come here to visit and warn up my welcome. Have you been crying? I see you've decided to go to a clinic in Israel so no one gets in your way, am I right? You're getting pregnant there, are you? I wonder who the father would be. That's none of your business. Actually, it is. Give me that thing! Oh, God! What? How come? 
How could maternity belt? This is no Who's maternity belt. So this, We're this. Still waiting. She was wearing this. Downstairs. She said it was a maternity belt. Do you know what this is? Do you realize? Huh? Uh, Take it. Yes, I was pregnant, but I had suffered a miscarriage. Uh -huh. Mother, Valeria, call an ambulance now. Sana, water. Two out of three Kenyan parents felt that they don't spend enough quality time with their kids. You can help change this by giving a generous voice to story time. Visit our library of homegrown audio stories at cadme.africa and make story time sweeter. Should pets be allowed to come to school? If pets are allowed to school, they will know new skills. This treasure lets you wish for whatever you want here in Slumberland. I could see my dad again. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream for ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream for ice cream. Today I'm going to show you how to make a dustpan using a five liter jet jerry can. On the count of three. One, two, three. Let's go. Peanut butter made with 100% pure peanuts and a good source of omega-6. Grow healthy and happy kids with Blue Burn Peanut Butter. Available in 200 grams, 400 grams and 800 grams. Buy a pack today. On the 15th of June, Treasury Cabinet Secretary Professor Njigo Nandungu will be presenting the Kenya Kwanzaa government's debut budget. He will be tabling an ambitious 3.6 trillion shillings spending plan on the one hand and faced with 850 billion shillings worth of debt redemptions on the other hand. Together, this is a staggering 4.5 trillion shillings spending plan. How does the government plan to finance this? Starting Monday, the 12th of June, the Nation Media Group will be on a rolling coverage of the 2023-2024 budget and what it means for you. We will be coming to you from the National Treasury, the National Assembly and the grassroots as we come through the fine detail, interrogate every digit and make sense of what this budget means for your pocket. Stay tuned across all our platforms for the most comprehensive coverage of budget 2023-2024. All right, welcome back. Glad to see with us. The show is your world. And of course, today is a very, very important day to all of us. Uh, and I'm pretty sure all of us are waiting for that 3 p.m. Um, you know, tick so that we can see what is going to happen, and especially when we expect the 2023-2024 budget to be read. And I want to read something that uh, Professor uh, Jugun Andungu, who's the, again, Treasury and Planning CS, said earlier this year, I think around uh, April over there, and he said, Kenya is determined at reducing the national budget deficit, cutting on debt and increasing revenue collection in the 2023-2024 budget. And he says the state is on a fiscal consolidation path to ensure the country preserves its debt sustainability as it races to gradually reduce expenditures to about 22.7 percent of gdp over the medium term but the big question is is that the case i'm just gonna <laughs> throw it to you um ruth very quickly so uh, i'm just looking at that that's good in words yes. but how are they going Action. to be implementing it yeah. because it's normally where the rubber meets the road that's yeah. where things are normally so hard it's mm -hmm. good to say mm -hmm. but actually we really haven't even in this budget mm -hmm. seen how they are going to shrink no nope. some of the things this thing yeah. expenditures especially the wage mm -hmm. bill mm -hmm. and i think today uh the cs better come out very clearly in terms mm -hmm. of what direction mm -hmm. is he heading heading uh, or with that yeah. for the last 10 years we have had a lot of budge because of the normal coalition things they have had mm -hmm. and that hasn't come out clear mm -hmm. how then are they also planning to bring uh the the few public resources they are giving to everyone to the millions of kenyans yeah. then how are they going to cater for that mm -hmm. even uh, uh 
in the in the future because mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe the country is a, is a going concern mm -hmm. um, uh, we, ca we can't actually really uh, be able to to look at this budget as just in the short term what are they what are the effect even mm -hmm. to the long the term, long term uh, yeah. are, are they is the CS going to come back next year with mm -hmm. still the same stringent measures mm -hmm. to the same people mm -hmm. no we haven't seen that in terms of implementation again even in terms of tax collection yeah. uh, we can see already he has a gap how is mm -hmm. he going to do that mm -hmm. and uh, if, if, if that doesn't come out clear then it's going we are going to go back to still where we are mm -hmm. and we are looking for solution mm -hmm. and no more common Kenyan is looking at working yeah. they really they want to be given incentives where they can be able to work and contribute to the taxes mm -hmm. and be given service delivery mm -hmm. a proper service delivery from the government mm -hmm. and uh, I, I believe Kenyans are hardworking they are resilient mm -hmm. they are ready to support this government but the yeah. government also has to be seen mm -hmm. to be supporting and one thing the CS has said and I repeat mm -hmm. is that this budget has used the uh, bottom up e bottom up economic, economic model yeah. has that really to what extent yeah. I would like to understand yeah. statistically yeah. to what extent you know it was like what we were promised versus what we are getting um, right right now and of course um, the question that we're asking you today is very simple all right and that is what are some of your expectations from the 2023-2024 budget reading this afternoon remember the hashtag that we're using across um, you know the board is the hashtag budget 2023 ke interact with us on our socials let's keep the conversation going but of course today we're focusing on the impact of this budget on the again quote unquote all right so a lot of you again still have a lot to say um so jacob omuro this is on facebook continues to say let kenyans suffer for them to vote wisely next time <laughs> okay and then someone else says um wilson injera who says we do not expect much from the budget reading today i don't even see the need um of the same but again you just might want to okay and then lydia davis on still on facebook says rise in the cost of living and then lucike hendrika says nothing at all they do not expect nothing <laughs> from the budget reading this afternoon and that is the same sentiment shared by uh, goni becky on facebook who says nothing hilda um Dongi says more taxing so then whitney we are here right and of course we expect things to get worse uh moving forward so the big question is then what do we do how do we then adjust to make sure that we at least survive let's just start from the basics at least <laughs> we survive even as we hope because someone said earlier on uh, that it it should bring us hope right so as we hope for things to get better maybe in the long term but as of now we don't ex uh, expect to see any changes um you know make things easier so what do we do how do we adjust well, um, Winnie, I want to be as pessimistic. It's not fait accompli. Okay. Not just yet. Yes. Um, we have the courts. I do believe that some of the um, provisions in the finance bill are grossly unconstitutional, okay. starting with the finance, um, um, no, the housing, housing levy. levy. So that yeah. we can have some recourse in the ju in the judicial system, we can get that expunged. That's okay. just one right. sort of just reprieve. one more hurdle because well, yeah. it passed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just one FPS. reprieve, but also one mm. one point five percent is quite significant. Yeah. Secondly, um, what what can we do to adjust? I would mm. okay. Just before I come to that, I would like to say that mm -hmm. we're going to uh, see an increase in illicit trade. Okay. Once you increase the taxes, mm -hmm. um, because the margins from the um, authentic goods mm -hmm. and non-authentic goods are going, the margin is going to be so high. Yeah. Um, people are going to be going um, for the things which are, of course, contraband and also just the counterfeits. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see an increase in illicit trade, and we know that illicit trade is a big crisis in Kenya. It, really is, it yeah. accounts for like about one trillion um, annually mm -hmm. in Kenya. So mm -hmm. we're going to see an increase in that. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to tighten our belts if yeah. we still have those belts? Okay. <laughs> 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 right? um, okay. So we can. Uh, this is going to affect the government when they collect their, uh, as they try to um, mobilize um, 2.6 um, trillion mm -hmm. in, in in taxes. Mm -hmm. We have to reduce our cons. Uh, we have to reduce our consumption. Okay. Now you see the government. This will be uh, something that's uh, absolutely counterproductive because they don't expect us. Probably they think that once they increase the taxes, mm -hmm. we're going to still be consuming the same. That's no. totally impossible because um, our disposable income mm -hmm. has uh, has that. shrunk. Yeah. Because of, as I've said, inflation mm -hmm. and also the taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, one, we can, we will have to decrease um, the consumer spending. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we can go for um, some some products which are more like substandard. Okay. Some sort of, yeah. So probably and, if and you're buying a product, itself, because then quality 
yeah agree. exactly yeah, 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 yeah. So, and even for businesses i mean the manufacturers and, and, and people who are producing this product of course quality is, is exactly because so, the product cost of production is high yeah, it's high so yeah. now probably you'll just have to uh, of course the counterfeit and right now probably you'll just have to go for um for um for products which are of less um quality mm. so and also um how else can we adjust um probably by yeah, trying to saying, live within more. your means but at the same time we still struggle to understand but also even what? the cost of the basic items is, is not affordable but also anymore. that's a very that's a very um that's a very misplaced um statement okay. because first of all we know that kenya suffers income inequality okay. a majority of kenyans are um below a hundred um thousand mm -hmm. so can you say um we should live within our means and also our incomes just don't <laughs> they're not sufficient for the cost and also Oh. As we've said, inflation is at eight mm percent. -hmm. Our, our purchasing power has decreased. Mm -hmm. The taxes, our disposable income. So, yeah. what do you mean that we should probably tighten mm -hmm. our belts <laughs> and also, like, our incomes are not grow? We have We're stagnant growing. incomes yeah. in Kenya, so yeah. our incomes have not grown um, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, on the same par as um, mm -hmm. inflation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. there's absolutely no way you can tell people to um, live within to, their means. To live, <laughs> live within their means when we have income inequality, yeah. people do not earn much in Kenya. Yeah. So, oh, really? yeah, yeah. I, I think there's gonna be th there better be a, an overhaul when it comes to policies okay. and one of the things that is really affecting us we know where the Kenya shilling is right now mm -hmm. and how it is weakening yeah. every day, every day yeah. and we know what is ailing us mm -hmm. we have a lot of to pay especially from the heat that we've had mm -hmm. in the infrastructural project that we have invested ourselves in for the last 20 years mm -hmm. and we can actually not continue with that because we have a lot of debts to pay mm -hmm. and over and above that as much as we are paying a lot out we are still paying a lot out for imports mm -hmm. so we are importing basically things even mm. things that Kenyan youth yeah. who are idle the if six million I was telling from, you about yeah someone from outside the yeah. country was asking, it comes from the UK it's why are you importing maize uh, well, yeah exactly right. truth pick. yeah, yeah. Truth pick. <laughs> and, and and some of <laughs> it actually <laughs> comes <laughs> even with government subsidy which is a good thing in the short term but what is the overhaul mm. in the policies because this can be in the short term because they have uh, the government has come in they are still looking for things how to sustain the uh, the country mm. in the short term. but what is what are the the, the, the long-term priority because strategically the budgeting process should be mm. uh, towards a certain direction mm. and previously we were you we used to hear or see mm -hmm. about we used to hear about 2030 vision 20 that mm. how far are we yeah. uh, you know who has really conversations now, isn't so. it yeah. because if all those are not aligned winnie mm -hmm. and this policy are not uh, given a proper overhaul mm -hmm. and what uh, i had the the, oh, 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 the one uh, the, the super cs one day say mm -hmm. or not so far uh, ago say that mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is the best year for the government to do these big changes and big overhaul mm -hmm. because depending on the Kenyan cycle mm -hmm. we know by the third year everyone is out campaigning yeah. but you see how how, how there's a lot of loss of I mean, trust if you ask me this, the campaign has yeah. already started it has, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, there's okay, lots of yeah, trust yeah, yes a lot of lost the, the common one has has doesn't have trust with what the government is saying but what what can the government do to affirm mm. this trust so that they can there can be hope there mm -hmm. needs to be hope mm -hmm. but that hope has to be given to somebody who is trustworthy yeah. and that's what we need to do in terms of overhaul yeah. overhaul and also uh, there also needs a lot of change when it comes to corruption i mean yeah, it's, it's, a big, it's a big rampant, issue. It's you know, very, very big I mean, country, yeah. and that is why she's saying there's mm -hmm. inequality when it comes mm -hmm. to income because there are those ones who are really earning and those ones who are not I'm really not earning, okay. you yeah. know. And uh, I was looking, I was watching, I was reading about the the NHIF the other day. Mm -hmm. And how the chairman came and stopped some of the biggest tenders that were being done because of uh, irregularities, mm -hmm. but how many other institution, government institutions? And that is after, doing? of course, the, 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 the whatever was, no was happening in behind you you know, know. Was, was highlighted, yeah. and that is where yeah. they stopped all those things. Yeah. Okay, you want to continue? <coughs> so, um, yeah. just to um, re um, to buttress what she was saying, mm -hmm. um, first, uh, but also more important, more importantly, I would expect Kenyans to be active citizens. This is not the time where you vote and then you wait for five years. You're mm -hmm. just chilling. You're just mm -hmm. looking at your MP, do, mm -hmm. MP doing things, mm -hmm. you have to hold these people accountable. accountable yeah, yeah, you have to hold them accountable. Um, as she was talking about the development um, expenditure, we've seen that in the budget, the development expenditure has not been allocated. Mm -hmm. A lot of money, a lot of money is going to um, recurrent expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, where we see the biggest multiplier effect is when we have infrastructure, when we have the development. So mm -hmm. this is where you're going to get um, um, foreign foreign investors coming to invest probably because we have good infrastructure mm -hmm. and also <coughs> we can. So we 
like the environment is favorable yeah, exactly for them just to a come good environment so yes okay. we, we have to look at this um elected leaders and say that we are going to hold them accountable if they say they're going to construct a road just anything mm -hmm. we must hold them accountable mm -hmm. um so that we can you know we can see value for our money in this taxes that we're going to um mm -hmm. they're, they're going to be collecting yeah, yeah. Winnie, uh, let mm -hmm. me just add something small especially mm -hmm. when we compare ourselves with countries around mm -hmm. or those ones that are of our of our yeah. age i mean let's just just you know the east african the east african, african yeah there. actually <laughs> yes. and i'm also looking at our tax policy uh, of for the last say, around 25 years that mm -hmm. have been in this field mm -hmm. Actually, it hasn't changed significantly for a very long time. Okay. If you look at something like pay, which is one of the main uh, income tax, it hasn't actually changed a lot until now mm -hmm. when they have said they are going to extend the band from mm -hmm. 800,000, uh, uh, 35%, mm -hmm. and between 500 to 832 percent mm -hmm. yeah. That has really actually not happened mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the last many years. Mm -hmm. And also, the fact that many other countries are charging 18% VAT, we are at 16, 16 I yeah. still look mm -hmm. at it as an opportunity to do even better, better but yeah. uh, the problem is that um, uh, we are looking we, we we are really looking at the top line we are not looking at implementation of those bottom lines mm -hmm. you know and that is where the big problem is mm -hmm. so uh, I think we can also look at the resilience of the Kenyan economy mm -hmm. where most of the Kenyans are working hard and being brought down actually being pulled behind by mm -hmm. say the the, uh, the 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 ease of doing business is not there mm -hmm. invest look at yesterday's newspaper yeah. it was saying mm -hmm. investors are going away they, and there yeah. are hundred mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. who wants to take their money elsewhere where they feel that yeah, their, the business is well. more favorable yeah. because to a businessman it's more about profit mm -hmm. how much can they do and some of this uh, if we are if we are chasing away our investors mm -hmm. uh, just look at the heat in our shilling how it's gonna happen to our shilling mm -hmm. and also to inflation yeah, yeah. the rich rich are actually running away okay so can we then take a little bit of responsibility here as Kenyans right I know it's very easy for all of us to say yes the government is not doing this the government is not doing that I mean <laughs> the government has to solve like in a way collect taxes but again like we said in a sustainable way uh, you know so that uh, people do not really really feel the, the, the pinch but the government said listen let's just suffer now for a better tomorrow but someone was saying by the time we, we get to enjoy some of us would not be here <laughs> right mm -hmm. so but at the same time we're also seeing a number of kenyans a lot of kenyans um you know at the same time who are not tax compliant right so then how do we take responsibility from an individual level and that is starting from the taxes so that again we don't get to to, to a point where maybe like in the next um five years or you know um and years to come we see uh and even higher increase when it comes to taxes so taking responsibility making sure that we that we are tax compliant where do we start from with me well that's yeah. a very interesting <laughs> question um the onus is on, on um, us on as us people yeah okay is it okay <laughs> uh, first of all the only way kenyans are going to be tax compliant mm -hmm. is when we see value for money when we see service mm. uh, services being delivered okay. when i go to the hospital i have an nhif card i don't expect it to be turned down mm. because they're not accepting um There's nhif no money, card first of all, exactly then, yeah. yeah like mm -hmm. <laughs> so people were remitting but where did you actually where take the, the money, money once it yeah. got to the consolidated fund mm. you took it to the consolidated fund so mm. um the only way kenyans are going to be tax compliant is once we see um services being delivered mm. when we see value for money in this um uh, in our taxes we've seen that they're trying to collect um 2.9 trillion mm. but 2.6 in ordinary revenues once they collect all that we're expecting to see just services and also um it the, the onus is also in carry to get the people who are evading taxes because evading taxes is the one that's illegal but most of us are just incentivized mm -hmm. to avoid paying taxes because i still have to hire i, I still have to get my own private insurance for health mm -hmm. i still have to hire my security guard mm -hmm. in terms of garbage i have to source for private um people to come yeah, collect my right. garbage so yes. when we, do you know in kenya we can actually live without the government because they're not providing any services okay. in terms of education we have to check it's more children. like the private who's, who's providing most of this yeah like the literally it's the private sector which is running this economy so the government <laughs> should not think that once they collect these this taxes they're going to you know lead to economic growth and development we know that, that it's the private sector which leads that but also the government in the money in the collect and the taxes that they, that they collect they don't provide for these services so mm -hmm. the onus is on them to prove to us okay. that our, our taxes are working for okay. us. Okay, like sort of like give people a reason to pay taxes. Exactly, that's what you're the, exactly. Because <laughs> some of us are just incentivized to avoid those taxes. I mean, even at the basic level, and also carry you know enables yes. people to do this. To do, yeah, <laughs> so take responsibility. Yeah, exactly. Well. So they collude with citizens. <laughs>
Uh, and, okay. and I think what has not really happened is that they normally say that when you want to hide something from an African mm -hmm. and a Kenyan in this case, put it in, it in a, a book. book. Yes. And you see, we, we are known, Kenyans, we are known uh, of doing really good write up, mm -hmm. writing good policies. Mm -hmm. And even other countries come to borrow and they implement oh, and they succeed. Yeah? Yes. From, day, from days in memorial, we've mm -hmm. done this. But we know that our implementation, we, 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 we are good in talks. Mm -hmm. And that is what we want to see different with the CS today okay. saying that this is we are going to collect this but this is what is going to be happening for example the one part the 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 the, the, the turnover tax mm -hmm. how many businesses have been educated how to go about it most of the businesses especially if you look for a business that is earning one million mm -hmm. per annum that's a really micro actually it's a micro mm -hmm. yeah but what is the level of education and this is why we are saying yes that the CS has come and said mm -hmm. that this is a proper economic kind of model, model budget mm -hmm. but how is the top down going to happen mm -hmm. in terms of communication yes. we are very poor mm -hmm. in communication in this country mm -hmm. the government actually is really poor mm -hmm. in communication daisy memorials from yeah. the daisy memorial mm -hmm. but how can they be able to come and now give the common one inchi the way forward in terms of what needs to be done mm -hmm. and and we, are, we we as a country we are good in fintech we are mm -hmm. we are really good in our technology yeah. and we can even that now that we can see the the, the government is trying to bring that net into the uh, in, 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 to absorb that that, that sector mm -hmm. into into the tax uh, uh, you know range mm -hmm. but now how is it how can the common monarchy be educated in terms of how to pay yeah. taxes corporates when there's an issue with corporates corporates are normally called at times so they are put in a mm -hmm. conference call, mm -hmm. hall and, and they are trained and yeah? Things, yeah but what is happening to the big majority if these things are not happening from a common monarchy level mm -hmm. then the government is failing in terms of how and actually mm -hmm. it's not failing itself it's mm -hmm. even failing and institution like KRA yeah. because mm. KRA then cannot be able to go mm. to the depth that especially if the uh, maybe the the platforms if the infrastructure mm. is not there to be able to come and uh, this is going to be a good talk budget mm. and we cannot wherever we are as a country mm. then we cannot afford good talk then mm. we are going to come next year with an unimplemented stuff yeah. then we are going to tax the normal formal yeah. sector yeah. again even more okay. I mean what are all we right. saying yes okay <laughs> people are angry this morning and we're all angry really uh, you know, as Kenyans, in terms of the way we see things, um, you know, moving right. Um, and so then, as we bring this to a close, because we literally have a few minutes to end the conversation. And of course, like remember, today we're giving you a wall to wall coverage. And I know our business editor, uh, Julian Samuko, is somewhere just waiting for us <laughs> so that uh, he can take over. But then the big question is so. Moving forward, even as we, you know, sit down and watch what's going to happen, um, you know, this afternoon, uh, what are some of the maybe surprises that you expect um, to see from from the the Treasury CS this afternoon, Whitney? <laughs> surprises? Yes. Wow, that's very really interesting. Because um, a lot of people will say like nothing, and lots of people are actually saying that it's like, yeah, there's nothing know, new. Okay, the, read the, the budget, budget has it. the budget making is a process. I think we've had everything from the budget policy statement mm -hmm. to the finance bill to yeah. all those allocations to mm -hmm. health and education. Mm -hmm. So. Today, I just, you know, also it's not mandatory for the CS to actually appear and also just read the budget. So okay. there's nothing much that I'm expecting. I think we've known everything. Mm -hmm. But what I would love the government to actually do is mm -hmm. to, to heed the, the, the advice of um, the Central Bank of Kenya. Okay. The Central Bank of Kenya gave um, an, um, a warning to um, the government saying that we've seen that they have a budget deficit of about 700 and something billion they want to source a 500 and i think 41 billion from mm -hmm. the domestic market mm -hmm. this um the treasury has said that this is absolutely this is, an, uh, is going to be a tall order because you know there are liquidity challenges mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the in the in the in the domestic market so i do believe that um this is something that the government should take heed of and also just find other ways of you know getting that money other than the domestic market because they're going to really crowd out that private sector once mm -hmm. they collect all, all mm -hmm that money mm -hmm. from the from the private sector and also we've seen the yields that um the tr the cbk is offering mm -hmm. i think the cost of credit is really going this to go high. go high yeah okay. yeah yeah so, so the government should just stop competing with the private sector okay all yeah. right stay on your lane, stay on your lane. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Ruth, very quickly. Uh, Any surprises on your end? Do you expect to see anything uh, I think different? a lot has been discussed, but I think the CS would really surprise me if he demonstrated mm -hmm. how he's going to do this okay. and how he's going to uh, plan for this, not only for the short term, mm -hmm. but the long term. I mm -hmm. think he'll do, uh, if he doesn't do that, then he'll do a lot of disservice to Kenyans. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And you know what a lot of people are saying? Um, is and, and, and again, I think we've, we've said this over and over and over again um, throughout the, the you know, the, the conversation is we have really good policies. We're really good in talk, right? But then again, when it comes to implementing some of those things is where there's no. a big of a problem. No. So for press structure is what we're saying and transparency um, at the same time is what you're saying. So that's, that will <laughs> incentivize exactly. a lot of Kenyans yeah. to yeah. sort of like pay taxes and whatnot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. just to stop the wastage in government mm -hmm. and please just stop the corruption. I mm. think, uh, and also when we look at corruption, all mm -hmm. the money they're seeking to borrow is about 700 billion. Mm -hmm. Once we stop, uh, once we still those leakages and mm. we stop corruption, Kenya won't even have to borrow mm -hmm. that amount because they can source it locally. Yeah. Let nobody lie to Kenyans that, you know, Kenyans, Kenya is face, facing a cash crunch mm -hmm. and we know there's a lot of money that's being it's looted. Yeah, yes. yeah, there's a lot yeah. of money being looted and also being wasted. So mm -hmm. I think the government should also rationalize. As they tell us to rational, uh, to, to tighten our belts, mm -hmm. they should also tighten their belts okay. kindly. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, 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 and Ruth, so some of this like priority areas, because again, like we said, um, you know, the previous regime, we saw a lot of like big for and of course a lot of investment going into the same so for this um you know the, the budget 2023 2024 what are some of these priority areas that you expect to see um you know the cs putting a lot of emphasis and a lot of investment again um in terms of resources into mm. the same one of the major thing uh, uh, in kenya actually mm. even in school we were taught that eco uh, agriculture is the backbone of the economy Absolutely. can this be can there be a change in this mm -hmm. in all these kind of big budget we cannot have 75 billion mm -hmm. only allocated to agriculture mm -hmm. as long as there's de uh, even as much as there's development mm -hmm. a lot needs to be done in mm -hmm. terms actually some of there has to be a, uh, I say there has to be change even when it comes to policy and even okay. the constitution mm -hmm. uh, uh, agriculture is one main thing mm -hmm. and if Kenyans are not if the common Kenyan is not being supported to do the agriculture mm -hmm. and I know our president is an, a, a, a farmer yeah. I think he should really fog he should give something uh, huge to, 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 to back to the government that is one the mm -hmm. second thing we have seen the conversation about development of health yeah. which has been a mess let's say uh, the health sector has been a mess yeah. and especially so let's try and, and it's and not the work facts. has not been paid okay. it's not the service delivery okay. we have seen the the corruption in Kemsa can this All also right. be brought back so that mm -hmm. even as we mm -hmm. focus on housing the people mm -hmm. getting those houses are healthy mm -hmm. and they have an income they are earning nice but that being, let me just yeah. add one thing. Seconds. the youth, one the youth budget, <laughs> the youth budget. Yeah. let the government let the, 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 the Kenyan government think about the common youth yeah. how can they be brought to the tax base as well Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Really, really great insights today. Ruth Kinyanjoy, economist as well as Whitney Musheni, who is a political and economist as well. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming by this morning. Let's hope thank for you. the best, yeah. at the very least, <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon. But again, thank you for staying with us. But again, like we said, we're giving you a wall-to-wall -wall coverage this day as far as budget uh, is concerned. That is 2023-2024. The hashtag we're using is budget 2023. K.E. Julian Saboko is uh, here in the studio just looking at me. He's like, Whitney, can you get out? Okay, we're out. <laughs> but stay put. Julius is taking over, uh, you know, on this very important day as far as uh, budget 2023, 2024 is concerned. And of course, like we said, we are giving you world-to-world -world coverage. And of course, we are in Parliament as well. Our reporters are there. Uh, I understand our very own Frederick Muichiriri and of course, Frida and Lofty as well will be um, there as well. So Lofty and um, Frederick, I think, should be uh, there at the moment. But uh, let me allow Julius together with his guests to take over so enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe goodbye for now